All right, good evening everyone and welcome to our Tuesday evening meeting. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with a, a moment of silence and then we will do Pledge of Allegiance and roll call and then I'll walk you through the rest of the agenda before we get started. So if you would please join me in standing for a moment of silence. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next we will do roll call. Commissioner Rapart. Here. Commissioner Moody. Present. Commissioner Kelly. Present. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner O'Connor. Present. Commissioner Lanier. Present. And Mayor Bliss. Here. All right, so next that will take us to our first opportunity for public comment. Let me walk you through our agenda. If this is your first time joining us tonight, hopefully you have a hard copy of the agenda. We have three opportunities for public comment. The very first one at the meeting, which I'll open up momentarily, is for comment on anything that we are actually voting on tonight. So earlier today, we met in a number of what we call standing committee meetings, and we talked about issues, and we um, cast vote on a number of issues, and you'll see those all listed on the agenda. So the first public comment period is really specific to items that we're voting on. Um, when I open up that public hearing, I'll ask you to come up to this space up here to put your name on the clipboard over there. You'll have up to three minutes to speak. We ask that you share your name, um, the city that you live in, and then specifically um, let us know what item that you're referring to. So that's the first opportunity for public comment. We do have one scheduled public hearing. So if you are here tonight to speak specifically about the Special Assessment Business Improvement District Rule 8738, we will be opening up that public hearing a little bit later on in the meeting, so I'm gonna ask you to hold tight until we open that up. And then at the end of the meeting is public comment on any other issue. Um, so I wanna bring your attention to one other item, and that is on the very front of the agenda packet, you'll see expected meeting procedures. Um, so we ask a number of things when you are in this space because we wanna make sure that it is safe for everyone to speak uh, and that everyone's voice and opinion is respected. And so we ask that you respect these rules, specifically the one about no clapping or cheering or holding of signs. Also, we ask you not to curse, uh, no name calling or derogatory comments. And if you do do any of those things, then I'll ask you to refrain from doing that and potentially I will end your public comment period. Um, the other thing that we ask is that you come forward and that you stand in line so that we know that you want to speak. And then as soon as no one else is standing, then I'll close that public comment period down. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started with the <laughs> public comment period. This is the very first item, and if you're here to speak about something that we're voting on tonight or that's on the agenda, now's an opportunity to come forward. 
So are you here to speak on anything we're voting on? You have to come up, Mr. Miller, or I'm going to close public comment. Good evening, fellow veterans and citizens of Grand Rapids. This is the House of the People. What's Doug Miller reporting? How do we run a, de a democracy without derogatory comments, so starting with Thomas Paine and so on? Uh, that's what our nation was built on. We get to criticize the guys in power. What item are you speaking to, Mr. Miller? Uh, that would be, uh, that's a new one, okay, uh, four, I think. In terms of 7-1 uh, through 7-6, uh, Parking uh, rates skyrocket. Why? Because you ban our our local neighborhood bus routes, uh, which I've gone through many times, and uh, the the rates are going to continue to skyrocket uh, until you bring our our local bus routes, uh, specifically where I have more standing, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, uh, Catholic, uh, and. Uh, that's the only best way of getting those parking rates down. I think maybe uh, you should charge your first and third ward what residents uh, uh, no parking fees anywhere in your facilities downtown because their bus routes don't come downtown, as I've told you many times. Uh, the uh, next eight, one and two, uh, please. Uh, uh, look at my budget uh, boosting ideas in your long uh, handout today uh, and put uh, Sarah Vanderwerf back up on the diet. She was, she was elected. Most of you were never elected. Uh, on 9-4, again, uh, why uh, the arena across the street, why, those parking rates are too high because you kick out most of our bus routes. You know. Black one, two, three, four, five, fourteen. The nineteen was stolen. Yeah, wake up, please, up there. Uh, next uh, on five, uh, that's a uh, that's a blob. It's not a quarter. It's a division. Uh, is one quarter Kydell Kyde Park? Uh, Granville is another quarter. So it's a multi-spoke blob. No deal details on ten thirty-two Franklin. That's three, three, four, five, and six. What is going on? Uh, nine and ten, uh, Jerry Ford, Presidential Foundation, is one out neighbor, grew up two doors down, who started it. Uh, Roger Morgenstern. There's no elaboration. What is this all about? And I specifically came here to protest the last time and this time. At Foundation is running huge gala events out in Meyer Gardens, uh, where our citizens cannot go. Why not? Why don't they hold their their events in plenty of halls, which you all know around town? You should be getting the, this visit. Also, the choice of music insults Jerry and Betty Ford's generation. They grew up with ragtime, uh, big band, and so on. That's the kind of music that should be played. Uh, one second off. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. All right. Anyone else who wishes to speak on items that we're voting on tonight? Hi, my name is LaDonna Norman. I don't know if I can change your mind about raising or not raising the parking meters, but I just wanted to come up and have a little suggestion for the people that may be low income and don't have like a credit card. If the city somehow can get some prepaid cards to pay for the parking meter, I think it'd be a great idea for people who are not familiar with it and maybe a walkthrough on, online on how to use those prepaid tickets for the parking meters. So I just want to say that's what I wanted to uh, say about the parking meters. And please don't raise them up. At least wait till after summer if you can. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else who wishes to be heard on items we're voting on tonight? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to close that opportunity for public comment, and that will take us to mm -hmm. approval of minutes from our last meeting. So, commissioners, can I get a motion? Two votes. Support. All right. Any questions, comments, changes? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, it carries. Next, that will take us to petitions and communications. Our first communication received from Steve Aldrich regarding long-term parking in downtown Grand Rapids. That is received and filed. Our second communication was received from Crystal Bowman regarding long-term parking in downtown Grand Rapids. That was received and filed. 
third communication received from Jean Shen regarding long-term parking in downtown Grand Rapids. That's received and filed. A fourth communication received from Al Alyssa and John Perkins regarding long-term parking in downtown Grand Rapids. Clearly an important issue. It is. <laughs> it's received and filed. A little repetitive. Sorry, folks. My fifth communication is received from Mike Clark regarding long-term parking in downtown Grand Rapids. That's received and filed. And our sixth and final communication received from Beth Rich regarding long-term parking in downtown Grand Rapids. And that is also received and filed. All right, that will take us to reports of city officers. Our first report is the Comptroller's report for the period of May 2nd, 2019 through May 8th, 2019 in the amount of $8,300,260.92. That's received and filed. And our Treasurer's report for the period of April 27, 2019 through May 3, 2019. And that is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to our consent agenda, and our consent agenda are items that we voted on earlier today in one of our meetings where the vote was unanimous. So tonight, with one voice vote, we'll adopt those items. So, Commissioners, can I get a motion for the consent agenda? Motion support. All right, any questions, comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? It carries. All right, that will next take us to ordinances to be adopted. We have two items tonight. The first ordinance is amending section one of the budget ordinance 2018-35 for fiscal year 2019, amendment number 17. So moved. Support. All right, Commissioner O'Connor from our fiscal committee, you want to tell us about this? Yeah, this is uh, relating to our street lighting department. Uh, we're just recognizing uh, $400,000 <coughs> in revenue over and above what was anticipated uh, in FY 2019, and it's uh, all projected for services related to the upgrade of our uh, electrical um, electrical services, and there is no change in our contingent fund balance. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, pretty straightforward. This is a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Linear? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Rapart? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. And Mayor Bliss? Yes. And can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? Two votes. Support. Support? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, next it'll take us to our second ordinance to be adopted tonight. This ordinance is for the adoption of fiscal year 2020 city budget ordinance. Moved. Support. All right, Commissioner Kelly, you want to tell us about this? Yes, well, starting in April 23, the city commission was presented with our city manager's preliminary fiscal plan. We followed that up with several meetings to develop a strategic plan which informed our budget decisions. And then on May 14, we'll hold a public hearing for the purpose of taking comments on the budget. So tonight we will be passing this budget and uh, we look forward to our, our residents having an opportunity to read it and hear about it in the news. All right. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, this is a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Repart. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. And Mayor Bliss. Yes. It carries. All right, next that will be take us to our city commission resolutions, and we have one resolution before us tonight. This is a uh, city commission resolution approving a polling location change. Support. All right, Commissioner Lanier, you want to tell us about this? Absolutely. So, um, Ward 3, Precinct 51 is being moved from Millbrook History Forum Church. I'm sorry, I'm not on. I'm loud, but not on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ward 3, Precinct 51 is being moved from Millbrook Christian Reform Church, um, which was located at 3661 Poinsettia Avenue, and it's being moved to Grand Rapids International Fellowship Church, which is 3765 Kalamazoo Avenue. And this move um, is because Millbrook Christian Reform Church has closed. And um, Grand Rapids International Fellowship is just around the corner, less than a mile away. So it allows for um, those voters to still be in the same neighborhood and not too far from where they originally voted. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. City Clerk, anything to add? No, she covered it very well. All right. Okay. Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
it carries. All right, next that will take us to our scheduled public hearing, and this public hearing is related to the Special Assessment Business Improvement District Rule 8738. So for these, for this public hearing, I will ask a city staff person, I believe Paul is here, um, to come up and do an explanation, provide us with an explanation, <coughs> and then if you are here specifically to be heard on this item, then I'll open uh, that opportunity up in just a moment. So, Good evening, hi, Mayor. welcome. Um, tonight, uh, at the request of the Uptown Business Improvement District, the assessor's office has prepared a special assessment role in accordance with the Business Improvement District's plan that was adopted back in January. Property owners were sent notices on April 11th and notified of the charge and the appeal process. The special assessment role has been open for public inspection for at least two weeks, starting on April 29th through today. Um, and through the state, we've received zero appeals. So tonight, the commission convenes as the Board of Review to hear the appeals, and tonight's the final opportunity to make an appeal. And I'll be available in room 901 to assist those wishing to file appeals. Okay. Um, the assessor and the city attorney <coughs> will review all appeals and report back to the commission on June 11th for confirmation of the special assessment role, and if confirmed, these will be invoiced um, July 1st with the summer tax statement. Thank you. Great, thank you. Commissioners, any questions about that? All right, so if you are here, um, so this body is acting as a board of review for an appeal. So if you are um, here to be heard about an appeal that you received related to this special district, now's an opportunity to come forward. Okay, seeing none. I'm going to close that public comment period, and we will go on. No? You know the rules, Mr. Miller, and you're not in this district. This is an appeal for people being assessed in this district. Uh, you can speak during public comment. All right, that public hearing is now closed, and that will take us to public comment. So if you are here tonight to be heard on any other item, now is an opportunity to come forward. Again, the same rules apply. We ask that you put your name on that clipboard over there, and that is just for recording purposes so that we get your name accurate in the minutes. Um, and then we ask you to use the microphone, share your name, the city you live in, and you'll be given up to three minutes to speak. <coughs> Hi, I'm back. I'm LaDonna Norman. I consider myself a community advocate here in Grand Rapids, housing and policing. Um, I just want to bring to your attention so what someone had told me. They said, I wish I could enjoy downtown like the white people do. And it's pretty sad. It, it says a whole lot without saying much, but our town is rapidly changing. The housing crisis that we have isn't resolved yet. We just continue to talk about things and forward to this person and that person, and we quite haven't resolved it. Um, there's still multiple families in motel rooms. There are multiple families in multi-units on top of other families. Um, just the other day, I, a couple days ago, I made a post. There's a one bedroom for $950, 650 square feet. People are profiting off of others' pain and vulnerability. There are some people out there that are gonna hop on that 950 because it's all they can find. And I'm just asking you to bring somebody in and let's not talk about it anymore, let's address it. Because what you've done when you address the housing is you've made landlords into semi-counselors and um, it's not gonna work, it's gonna blow up in our face. Um, and I just want you to pick some real people out of the community, not the ones you handpick and put in place for us, but pick some genuine people out of the community to show you how to get us back and on the right track and be self-sufficient, even though we're low income. I also made a statement to the acting um, chief of police. I said, hey, when you're ready to form a relationship with the community, let me know, because I'm not handpicked. I don't have an agenda, I'm not a politician, and I, I'm not associated with the organization. But when you want to do some genuine stuff, the city of Grand Rapids is more than welcome. You have my information to contact me. The Grand Rapids Police is more than welcome to contact me when they want to start forming real relationships with the community. I'll see you next meeting. Thank you, LaDonna. All right, others wish to be heard? <coughs> 
Hello, my name is Rodney Perry. I live at 1906 Rosemont and I'm here again regarding the property taxes at my house and my parents' estate. Um, I think you all are pretty, pretty familiar with the situation of being overtaxed and uh, the wrong uh, classification which that all came from the assessor's office. So we'll fast forward to uh, Mayor Bliss. You directed me last time I was here to talk to the chief financial officer, Mr. Dudes. Well, I tried to do that. Mr. Dooge did respond back with a very biased email suggesting that uh, he, connect, he, con he, co he got the facts from uh, the assessor's office, which apparently meant I didn't give him any. Um, he also suggested that uh, they had high integrity and were very honest and square dealing, which suggested I wasn't. Later, he found out that, in fact, I had told him the truth. I had given him correct information, and what the <coughs> assessor's office had given him was in fact an error. The young lady right here came out with an appraiser, found out that the city had made all sorts of errors. They recently corrected some of the uh, assessments and valuation. However, Mr. Dudes, after 40 phone calls, nine emails, has never responded back. And my house still sits in foreclosure along with my parents' estate. So if he's not going to respond back, how am I supposed to correct the situation? Who do I turn to? And what you have is a perfect reflection of the good old boy network with Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Ingerson, who is a city assessor. He does the wrong thing. He knows he does the wrong thing. I've proven that already. Mr. Dudes, who teams up with Mr. Ingerson, simply says, we're going to ignore you. Now, it's one thing to be treated as a little less of a man. It's another thing to be treated even as a black man. But I will not be treated as a nigger. And that's exactly the way I feel with exactly the way they treat me. Now, I have nobody else to turn to. Nobody. To show you another example of this, <clears throat> I get 100% of the PRE. To get that PRE, principal residence exemption, I have to be the homeowner. I recently applied for a poverty exemption because they've broken me financially. I applied for the poverty exemption. I was denied. I was denied because they said I was not the homeowner. This is not rocket science. Either I am or I'm not. So if I get the PRE, that means I am. So what's the reason for the denial? What you have is an orchestrated dismantling of a black family. And has a, a black family who has no place or nobody to turn to. And I'm wondering if you're not going to do anything about it, like you said, you want to root out the systemic racism, it's right in your backyard. All you have to do is do something about it. Thank you. Mr. Perry. Mayor. <clears throat> yes, City Manager. Um, we'll have to follow up after um, the meeting on the specifics. But I do want to express your rules about civility. And uh, as much as I can appreciate um, the feelings that might emote, it's not appropriate for anyone here to use uh, that racially offensive word. Thank you, City Manager. All right, others who wish to be heard? Good evening, Mrs. Mayor, Commissioners. Thank you for having us tonight. Uh, we're here to announce the formation of a new neighborhood association. For close to a year, we've been organizing in the Boston Square area. And so this is my uh, Cody, <laughs> just uh, right here with me. And uh, so we've been organizing within the boundaries of um, Kalamazoo and Burton, Burton and Eastern, uh, Hall and Eastern, and Hall and Kalamazoo. And uh, we have been hosting meetings uh, to great response. Um, over the years, I've been living in the area for 23 years. Uh, and there's always been a call out for neighborhood representation. Um, and so about a year ago, we decided to take up that charge. And uh, we've been having great turnout at meetings and great response from residents. And um, we're at the point where we're ready to to move ahead, we've recently done a neighborhood cleanup. 
Uh, we have plans for other things along that nature, beautification of the area, uh, helping uh, residents with yard work and different things like that to, uh, you know, just help bring the neighborhood up and make it a much uh, healthier place to be for everybody. Um, would you like to say something? Uh, yeah, I think that's most of it, but we also just wanted to make everybody aware if they're within those boundaries that they're welcome to join us. And there's a Facebook page where we'll post all of our meetings, but it's the first Saturday of the month. Great. And can you remind us of what your name is? My name is Jess Kramer. Jess Kramer. And so um, we're just looking for you guys' support in that endeavor. And uh, we'll make sure we'll be keeping you updated on future events and things that we have planned for the area. Great. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Yep. All right. Others wish to be heard? <clears throat> yes. Yes, my name is Sidney Deans. I live at 843 Dickinson Street, Southeast Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now, what I like to speak on, what I like to speak on is uh, what's happening to the Grand River. Uh, what's happening is that uh, through illegal dumping, we know it's, it's, it's most likely happening. Also, the city water treatment plant, along with every other water treatment plant that, 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 that um, lets their waste go into the Grand River, because we have nothing to stop these chemicals from passing through our water treatment plant. What we need is a, uh, a final filtration system. And another thing that's going through there, that's going into the river, is these life forms that you use to help break down uh, the human waste and care and all, you know, help to break it down and care and all. Now this stuff and what's happening with these life forms is, you know, they have been bred to the point to where they have a, a, a as I remember back, I don't, know, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, said they have a very vigorous appetite. So in other words, you know, they, they've been changed from their original, bred from their original uh, 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 way they have to a very dangerous way now. They, they have a light that these, uh, that this water passes under. And they say it sterilizes them. But uh, this I don't believe. I don't believe that this works in roughly three foot of water and it's running roughly about four, about five, maybe six miles an hour, that it will sterilize these things. If these things ever get inside a human body just by a young person out there, you know, fooling around the water can them. There's no way of destroying this, this life form after they get inside one. No medication will help you. And I hate to have somebody child being eaten up alive from the inside out. That's why, that's one of the reasons I'm speaking on this here is because if, if something is not done, this may come to be. And we really don't want this to happen to any one of our children, you see. Now, you just about done, they just about done killed that river out there. The sucker fish is just about gone. The catfish is dying out. They coming up with big sores on them again. On My brother, he caught a catfish about, about like that a couple years ago. And just about all the skin had been eaten off it. Just a, you know, just a red mask. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, sir. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hi, welcome. Hi. I'm Andrea Hendrick. I think you guys, a lot of people here know me, but maybe not in the capacity that I'm in now. I'm actually here representing Green Skies Healing Tree. Um, we have a number of medical marijuana facility applications that will be heard in the city of Grand Rapids. I just want to let you guys know um, our local partner, Mike Bradley, is here as well. Um, we have some serious commitments. You know that we have made commitments with the MyVita, and we very much intend on keeping those commitments. And I think we have some really good 
goals to make that happen. We are partnering with the, with the RAPID so that any facility that we are approved for, we will be significantly improving the transit in that area and improving accessibility, whether it's with um, whatever is needed, we'll be using them um, as our consultants just to say, okay, what, where can we put a bus station? Can we, put, can we cover this? Our first site at 3425 um, Plainfield, we are already looking at closing a curb cut and adding a covered bus station. In addition, we are partnering with Daryl Ross and him and I will be spearheading the community engagement. Um, we will have a pretty aggressive um, plan for outreach and diversity. We plan on hiring, obviously, within the community. We've made some serious commitments to that. We'll be working with the neighborhood organizations um, on a sustainability plan that includes community and um, benefit agreements that will really identify those things that uh, the community wants, as well as putting locals in a position of leadership within our organization. Um, and we look forward to just partnering with you because we will be working with you guys individually on this. And I hope that, I really think this is going to be a successful um, partnership with the Rapid, with Daryl, and with the locals. And I know that the intent of the MyVita um, was to pull in locals. And I really want, I really believe that that's going to happen with this partnership. So just stay tuned and stay involved. And please feel free, free to contact us. We will give you our contact information. Additionally, you know, we will be, we have a planning commission hearing this Thursday for 3425. And those plans have significantly changed in accordance with the comments that we received from the community. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. Others wish to be heard? Hello, my name is Martha Cooper. I'm from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I have many things in my heart as long as um, I've been coming here over and over to keep you from forgetting that people are still struggling for housing. It really did not get fixed. I wanted to say that as a member of Homes for All, we worked very hard and we took the city seriously on the Housing Now proposals or the zoning proposals. And in the end, we had at one point all of the neighborhood associations in here to, to talk about this by right development. We changed, watched the language change. And then when they're not here, you voted it through with nothing in it for housing, affordable housing. I saw you rise to that occasion and I appreciated that. But there's a long way to go, a long way. My rent got raised. I saw a post online of a woman that I care about. She's been advocating for housing. Her rent was raised. She'll be moving in a month, and she'll be having to look in this market. My heart goes out to her. My heart's always been there for these people because I'm those people. Okay, I've seen my mentally ill friends. I'm out of time because I also came today to say that I marched with Koseja on May 1st, and I've never seen anything like that in my country. I saw them come up here. I want to remind you of my friend Patty, who spoke and said that in Nazi Germany, when his people were under persecution, the bodies just like yours were complicit. So I call you out today. That is why I'm here. You guys have no idea. I never could have believed that I could have seen that many state police, Grand Rapids police. That had to cost a lot of money. This is a family. Nobody was getting arrested that day because we had a purpose. It was not to disrupt the city for complicit with ICE and complicity with people that will profile a Mexican-American immigrant in the paper, it said, and I want this stated out loud because it hasn't been in the media, I found out that not only was he in custody of ICE for three days, but he was in the Kent County Jail for 30 with a mentally ill problem. I don't know if he was ever granted an arraignment or a lawyer. The city is under investigation for its heavy handed and possibly, not just possibly, um, civil rights violations. And Mark Washington, as far as I'm concerned, you're quite new here. We have not, not been offered, introduced properly as you arrived in the middle of the housing crisis, but I know that you come from Austin, where there's been a lot of gentrification and displacement. And I wonder if you have managed to come up with any ideas to solve that, 
considering that this is a heavily uh, city Thank manager you. government. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Appreciate your input. Thank you. That was uh, Mr. Miller, do not yell from the back of the room. That's not okay. Hi. Greetings. Uh, my name is Wesley Watson, resident of Ada. I'm um, speaking here today. I'm the regional director for Next Gen Michigan here in West Michigan. Um, we're at advocacy program focused on youth, uh, putting youth the age range between 18 to 35 um, into the civic engagement um, activities within our community and to the political process within our community. Um, I'm here today to stand in and to support um, for the proposed human rights ordinance to the city. Uh, we stand as an organization. Um, we're a nationwide organization. As a nation, we stand and support uh, this, organization, this ordinance. Um, um, as a nation, as a whole organization. Um, also, um, letting you guys know, and you guys are invited, uh, starting in Juneteenth, we will start, we will launch our Voters' Rights Advocacy Program um, for youth within um, West Michigan. Uh, we're looking, looking to do a listening session with the city clerk on what ways, how, how can we improve um, high turnout around youth uh, when it comes to youth voting here in West Michigan. Um, also, how can we get uh, youth to be poll workers um, and also help out within the elections? As we look at what ways, you know, how can we change um, polling locations up? How can we change the, the environment and the scene? Uh, what better way than changing that by adding youth uh, into the process? Um, and we're speaking about youth age range between 18 and 35. How can we get them involved um, uh, within our whole community process? Um, we're looking to do a listening session on Juneteenth, which is June 19th, uh, at Link Up. Uh, you guys are invited. Also, we'll be partnering uh, as an organization with Healthy Homes uh, Coalitions and Parents for Healthy Homes to talk about the lead exposure here in Grand Rapids. Uh, also, later that day at Link Up on June 19th, we're looking to do a screening of the BET Finding Justice uh, documentary about lead paint exposure in the Baltimore area and how um, we can take the tools um, that Baltimore have, have used to solve our lead exposure problem here um, in West Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Mayor Bliss, City Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Chad Dowding, and I'm coming to speak as a member of Equity PAC of Grand Rapids. I would like to highlight three major points uh, that are important to both our organization and to myself. Um, we think it's incredibly important that we insist on a public union contract when that is renegotiated to ensure that no barriers are removed or to <laughs> increase the ability for civilian oversight, transparency, and community accountability. We'd also like to see that any person considered as the next chief of police uh, needs to be serious about prioritizing and implementing the reforms needed to address ongoing systemic issues um, that have plagued GRPD for generations, especially in regard to racial equity. We also think it's incredibly important that uh, there be, when considering recent staffing studies that have been done, to make sure that those guidelines are implemented and investing more in support staff and structural change rather than more patrol officers. I also want to just add, I think it's incredibly important that we continue to support uh, the immigrant community of West Michigan and to the extent that we can continue to do that and ensure that the police are taking uh, serious action as to maintain the civil rights of our immigrant neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. All right, others who wish to be heard? Watchdog Miller back uh, on the Ford Foundation. Uh, Jerry went to Madison School and uh, South High School, uh, but people have taken over the Ford Foundation and Museum. It's basically a 15-paycheck uh, 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 home invasion. Uh, they're not representing Jerry. Certainly, the, their music was n not the music that's going out there in Meyer Gardens. Outside, as you know, our rapid tax zone, our, our bus people go there. Most of all, if they hold any events, then we've got plenty of dance halls and so on, or Fifth Street Hall, whatever, uh, in uh, my old neighborhood, that where they could go. This is insulting that year after year they're going out to Meyer Gardens. There's another one scheduled for around the 31st. 
Uh, how do we do a democracy without criticism? Read Thomas Paine you know, as you're on your reading list. See what he said. That's how we voted from from uh, uh, the slave uh, uh, riddled Britain in the first place. And because of all the criticism in the late 1850s, our country fortunately turned against slavery. We had a huge civil war, 700,000 uh, deaths of uh, white soldiers. And you guys up there still won't back our, uh, you want to knock down our veterans home up there. No backing up there. And maybe that was a whole problem in 48. Uh, so we can't run a democracy without criticism. I mean, I mean, in your uh, start of your administration, uh, uh, Trump, uh, speaker after speaker will come up criticizing Trump for uh, Confederate memorials in the South. 1861, not a single Republican owned a uh, on the slave, you know, it was the Democrats put them up, and uh, this commission was flooded with nasty comments about our duly elected president under the system. Uh, next, uh, you brought in dozens of radicals to speak and take over our assembly. They've never been. Uh, there's been no litigation against them uh, uh, by our city attorney staff. And uh, speaker after speaker come up denouncing ICE as, as one speaker tonight. And so this is and more anti-veteran discrimination. And I, I fuller, but one thing I neglected to put in there is uh, Amy Buckner Snow. Worked for a racist rag Sir, Mr. for Miller, years. Ms. Mr. Miller, in, no, I'm not going to let you She was your campaign up. treasurer. What? Mr. She was Miller, your campaign treasurer. Mr. Miller? Out of many city I, hall secretaries, Miller, I'm you not passed, you doubled you her sit. up here you and call people racist. I, I didn't call your her time, racist. I said she works for a racist rag. Enough. Okay. No, well, your time well, is up. Your you time have, is up. Well, then, Mr. Miller, your no, time, what you do Mr. Is, Miller. Your time what you is up. do is have a vote Mr. on it. Miller, if you want to muzzle this veteran, your time is up. Vote on no it. more. You need to follow. You can be critical and be respectful. I've seen you do it before, and you can do it again. Your time's up. Hi, welcome. My name is Cornell Clark. I just support the human rights ordinance. That's what I'm here for. That's all. All right, others who wish to be heard? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close that opportunity for public comment. I will turn to my colleagues. Let's start down here. Commissioner Park? Well, this is the most important day of the year. We passed the budget, and uh, I, uh, I love the new values that we've created for the city. They say that, you know, a budget is a moral document that demonstrates our values. I feel like this budget hits all, all of the, the values that we've identified. So. Uh, like I said this morning, I hope that there's something that every citizen is excited about in this budget and that they'll recognize that for only a $20 increase, we're adding incredible value to their lives uh, with the services that that we've created. I also just want to say to Jeff Dode, I hope you sleep real well tonight. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Moody? No comment. Commissioner Kelly? I just want to say thank you to the staff for working on the budget and to our city manager for getting us through this actually early. That's nice. All right. Commissioner Lanier? Yeah, quickly, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming out and um, sharing um, public feedback. Thanks. Commissioner? Uh, yeah, I'm really happy that uh, the budget stuff's over, and I uh, really appreciate the fact that you all were willing to put uh, put the, the savings and keep our 15 and 10% set aside, and I look forward to working with uh, Mr. Dowd on uh, how we get to 20 and 15. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Jones. Yep, just want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. And, uh, that's, uh, and also thank you to uh, City Manager Washington and staff for, again, the completion or the approval of the budget. Yeah, thank you. City Manager. All right. Well, I'm going to add my thanks. Uh, this is your first budget. You joined us in October and you hit the ground running. And um, I just want to thank you for all of your work as well as all of the staff. Uh, and it's a good day. We passed our budget. So, city attorney? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, with that, we're adjourned. Drive safe, everyone. Hey, y'all. Um